Hello guys, I welcome you back to another episode here on Mozanzi Confession. The following confession that you are about to hear is a translation of a confession that I received on WhatsApp. It reads like this. Hello my brother, can you please share my confession for me and keep me anonymous? I want to confess to the world that around 2006 up until 2009, I used to rob people in Musina. I grew up in Makwarera, Venda. As a child, I was not a child who was told I was very disciplined. I used to go to church all the times. In fact, I wanted to be a policeman or to be a soldier. But unfortunately, one unfortunate Christmas, when I was still 17 years old, me and my friends, we entered a china shop and we robbed that china shop. After that, I got arrested and I got a criminal record. Then when I wanted to apply to be a policeman, I was told that because of my criminal record, I could not get into the police force. After that, my parents took me back to school. This time I was studying at Techniven, but always I was around bad characters. After I graduated, I went to work in Musina. When I began to stay in Musina, there was a place that I was renting a backyard room. My landlord had a son and this guy, he was almost the same age with me, so we became very good friends. But what surprised me is this guy, he was unemployed, but each and every day to him, it was like month end. And if you ask him to buy you beer, he will buy you the whole case. So one day I asked him, where are you getting all of this money since you are not working? And he replied to me and he said, one of these days I am going to go with you and I will show you the type of job that I do. Then there was this one unfortunate Sunday. I was sleeping in my room. Then I had a knock on the window. I asked who was it and he told me that it was him. So I opened the door for him. He entered at my room and he said to me you wanted me to show you the type of job that I do so let's go as I was dressing I took my jacket and I put it on but he shouted at me and said eh in winichi derawe I asked him why are you saying that I am stupid and he told me where are you going with your ID book and your phone so I left my phone and my ID book but that is when I realized that wherever that we were going it's either we were going to rob a house or to rob someone but I told myself that I really needed this money because at that time I was dating this girl and their family was so rich because her father was working for De Beers. as we were walking in the street I realized that my friend he was wearing a very long dark jacket the one like Undertaker and inside that jacket he had a very long knife the one like machete the whole location was so quiet because it was late at night you could only hear distant sound of music playing at the taverns as we walked through the houses dogs were barking at us we arrived at a stop sign then my friend said we are going to wait here because there is a car that is going to come and pick us up after about 30 minutes i wanted to complain because a lot of mosquito were biting me then there arrived a red city golf it had a gp number plate we entered the vehicle i counted including the driver there were about three guys the car was driven towards bait bridge border post but these guys they never spoke to me directly they only spoke with my friend as they spoke with my friend i saw that these guys they were not from venda later on as we kept on working together i realized that two of them they were in the valley the other one was shona we drove for about five kilometers towards the border. Then we stopped at a place where illegal foreigners were looking for transport. We stood with those illegal foreign nationals and we pretended as if we were part of them. Then my friend, he told me that there is a taxi that is going to come. And when that taxi comes, you are going to see what is going to happen. We stood there until the taxi came. When the taxi came, it passed us and it made a U-10. That's when those three guys, they pulled out guns. They the Shona guy and the two Ndevele guys, they were shouting in their foreign language and they told everyone that they must get into the taxi. There were about 25 of them. They wanted to fight back, but my friend, he also pulled out his long knife and all of them seeing the gun and the knife, they rushed into the taxi. As the taxi was driving towards Messina, we began to search all of them. We took their money. Some had cell phones, some had new clothes. My friend and his partner, they wanted 
tried to take advantage of the women that were in that taxi but i said to my friend that is very wrong you should never do that let's just take their money and leave them so we drove out of messina and we dumped them somewhere after we had dumped those people we went back to the location and we left all the money and all the cell phone that we have dropped those people and we went back to that hiking spot and we robbed more people until the morning came when the morning came we shared all of the money i was surprised that i had made something like 9000 rands within one night I saw that my life had changed even my girlfriend I could do anything for her without complaining or doing anything I did this for about 3 years we'll go to the hiking spot with a car then people will get into the car then after driving we we'll rob them everything then we we'll just drop them but eventually I was caught the way that I got arrested is Me and my girlfriend were having a lot of fights because I had cheated on her while she was still pregnant. So when she found out that I had cheated on her with her best friend, she was so angry. She took her phone while least we were still arguing and she phoned 10111 and she told them that my boyfriend is a thief. He robs people at the hiking spot. After she realized that she had given the police my name and all the information about what I was doing she tried to apologize to me but I told her and said look you have already given the police my name there is no need to apologize it's already too late after some time I got arrested and at the police station they told me that we have been looking for you for such a long time I then went to prison but I did everything that correctional service was asking me to do so I got out early on good behavior when i came out of prison the first place that i went is my girlfriend's place because i wanted to see my son it had been a long time without seeing his face but i got the shock of my life because i was told that we didn't want to tell you while least you were in prison when they explained it to me they said this to me while least i was in prison after about 6 months my son will just wake up screaming as if someone was beating him my girlfriend cry as she explained it to me she was saying that one day she was at work and my child was at home and he was playing with other boys as usual but she just got a call and she was told that my son had been hit by a car and it was a hit and run and my son had died on the spot all of these years i have been trying to get hold of that toyota camry that did kill my son all i want is answers from that person who was driving that car i just want to ask him why did he hit my son why did he kill my son and just ran away the toyota camry they just told me that it was a green toyota camry and no one could get hold of the license plate number i know that i paid for my sins by going to prison but now i am paying for my sins in my heart every time i think of my son and oh so these days i have been hearing strange noises in my head there are many times that i wake up at night as if i am hearing voices these voices they just shout at me and i cannot even translate what they are saying i really feel as if i am starting to go crazy recently i had found a good job and also likely i had found a good woman i told myself that this woman is the woman that i am going to marry but we have separated because of this incident that happened Me Me and my girlfriend were sleeping in the bedroom as usual but I was shocked that my girlfriend was shouting at me as I was standing at the door I asked her why are you shouting at me then she told me as she was pointing at my hand and she said why are you holding that knife why are you pointing towards me why do you want to kill me I asked her I will never kill you why do you think that I want to kill you and she said why are you holding that knife against me I looked at my hand that's when I saw that I was holding a knife as i was thinking how did i wake up how did i go to the kitchen and got a knife why am i holding this knife my girlfriend took the chance and she jumped out of the window as she was jumping out of the window she fell down and at that same time there was a police van that was passing through when the police saw that my girlfriend had just 
jumped out of the window and fell down. They came rushing into the yard and they asked her, what has happened? Is there someone who is beating you? And she screamed at them and said, my husband, he is holding a knife. He wants to kill me with the knife. So they smashed the door and then they arrested me. I told them that I don't know what happened. I just woke up and I was holding this knife, but they just put me in the handcuffs and they threw me at the back of the van. We arrived at the police station and the docket was opened for attempted murder. I then spent about three days at the holding cells before going to court. But luckily, my girlfriend, she came at the police station and she said that she wants to withdraw the case. But it was already too late for me because my boss had heard that I was trying to kill my wife. I tried to explain to him and he said to me, I am not going to work with someone who is hallucination. I then lost my job. I then moved back at my parents' house. But at my parents' house that I am staying right now, no one wants me to stay there anymore because of the things that I am doing. Sometimes I can just scream on top of my voice. The reason that I will be screaming is because I hear a lot of voices in my head. And these voices, they speak so many languages that I don't even know. And some of the words that they tell me, they can just tell me that tonight we are going to kill you. Tonight we are going to kill you. And if we don't kill you, you are going to kill someone. So sometimes I can walk around the house shouting those words. Tonight I am going to kill someone. Tonight I am going to kill someone. So all of the people, they just lock their doors. Now they told me that they don't want me to stay there anymore or else they are going to call the police. Please help me guys. I don't know what else to do. That was a confession from Anonymous. Let us move over to our next story. It reads like this. Please post for me as Anonymous. A couple of years ago, my father asked me to come back home because him and mommy, they were having a lot of issues. They were arguing each and every day. So one day, my mother, she just left. So my father asked me to come back home even though I was married at that time. So I came back home because I wanted to take care of my siblings. At that time I was 24 years old. The day that my father found out that my mother had moved in with another man, it really broke his heart. So he asked me to go and buy him some beers and also some marijuana. I went there and I bought him some beers and some daha. So when I came back with his beer, I sat with him because I really felt sorry for him. Later on, my siblings, they went to sleep in their bedrooms, but I stayed behind watching TV with my father. I really felt sorry for my father, but I wanted to cheer him up. So I told him, Daddy, can I dance for you? He said, okay, my daughter. So I did put some music for him and I began to dance. As I danced, my father, he stood up and he began to dance with me. But I then noticed that there was something strange that was happening in his trousers. I cannot explain everything that happened to the public. But what happened is the next morning I woke woke up sleeping on my father's chest in his bedroom and we were both naked and this thing continued to happen until I divorced my husband and moved back home. Two years later, I was pregnant. After that, I gave birth to a baby girl. I really love my daughter, but help me guys because I am so confused. How can I tell my daughter that my father is also a father? Please, when you have posted, notify me because I want to follow through all of the comments. That was a confession from Anonymous. Let us move over to the next confession. It reads like this. Hello, my brother. Can you please post my secret for me, but please keep me anonymous. I really need help. I am an 18-year-old girl. I had a baby about two years ago. Yes, when I was still 16. Yes, I am a baby mama. I know that some people are going to insult me, but me and my guy, we separated in good terms because he could not support me or the baby financially. It has been about eight months since we got separated, but that is not my problem because the guy, he doesn't even care about his own baby. Now I do everything to support my baby, but the way that I am supporting my baby, I have to admit that I sell my body just 
to put food on the table. In short, I am a prostitute because of my son. So this other day, I slept with two men. The reason was my baby was very sick. I was so desperate for taxi money to take my boy to the hospital. I slept with these two men and I got about 200 runs. It was enough for me to go to the hospital with my son and also to come back and to buy some food. Then after some weeks, I started to get ill. I went to the hospital. Then I was told that I was pregnant. Between these two guys, I don't know who is the real owner of this pregnancy. But now I feel like getting an abortion. But I am afraid that if I get an abortion, maybe my womb will be affected and I don't want to lose my womb because i hear many stories that women can lose their womb after getting an abortion please help me guys should i keep this pregnancy or should i just get an abortion but even if i keep this pregnancy i don't have anyone to take care of me right now i'm doing prostitution so that i can buy nappies from my son what will happen to me if i have two kids please help me out with any ideas that was a confession from Anonymous. Let us move over to our next story. It reads like this. Hello, please post for me as Anonymous. Me, I am a 30-year-old woman who is based in Pretoria. I am a person who really love to have fun, but this fun is really killing me. I am no longer a good role model for my children because what happens is each and every weekend, I bring different men into my house. Different men come and they pick me up in front of my children and this is really bad. I am teaching my children bad morals. All I care about and good food. If a weekend goes by and there is no guy that has come to pick me up, I really feel sad. Please help me. What can I do to stop bringing different type of men in front of my children? Because some nights I can go out with a man, then I'll come back home drunk and we can do crazy stuff and I know that this is very bad for my children. Please help me out. That was a confession from Anonymous. Let us move over to the next confession. It reads like this. Hello, my brother. Can you please post for me as Anonymous? I am a man who is aged 40. Recently, I have developed strange feelings. I just found out that I love to wear women's clothes. But what I do, I lock my bedroom door. Then I open a suitcase where I keep all of the ladies' dresses that I buy. So many panties that I have bought from Ackermans, I wear them when I'm alone in my room. I even have G-strings and when I wear these G-strings, I really feel as if I am a woman. Please help me. I don't know how to stop this because recently I have been having this feeling of trying to pretend like a woman so that I can sleep with a man. I don't know what to do because this thing is driving me crazy. I am afraid that if my wife finds out it is going to destroy our marriage, please help me. How do I stop this? That was a confession from Anonymous. Dear listeners, for this episode, these were the confessions that we had. And remember, a wise man will always learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs>